Hi guys and welcome back. Well, just when I thought I was done with bookkeeping to trial balance, I got emailed and they say that the section has been added to the subject consisting of the financial statements. So that will be your income statement and your balance sheet. Now when you do the financial statement um, subject, you will do this in a lot more detail. So this is just a basic example which they added to the bookkeeping to trial balance subject to show you what happens after a trial balance was completed and obviously the financial statements are used to analyze your business to see how it's performing financially and what is the um, position the, the the position of your business um, of your business so i'm quickly going to do the, one of the examples that that they emailed me it should be in your textbook page 240 if i'm not if i'm not mistaken okay so the first thing to do your financial statement and this is really not difficult especially since this is a very basic example so this is really not difficult and yeah it's quite easy actually so in order to understand your income statement and your balance sheet or how to complete it you just need to look at your trial balance because all this is is you just put this information on here in a different format just to check how your business is doing all right so the first thing we're gonna have to do you start off by doing your trading account and your profit and loss account now your trading account your profit and loss account and your income statement you only use the nominal account section of your trial balance okay to do the trading account and please please note your trading account, you only use your sales and your cost of sales account. Okay. Your profit and loss account, you use the total of your trading account, whether it's a debit or a credit balance. Um, you add that in, well, you add, you bring that amount over to your profit and loss account, and then you use the rest of the details of the nominal account and just fill it in to get your balance. So first thing is what you need to know in your trading account. So you use your sales and your cost of sales. So whenever you have a debit balance on your trading account, it will be moved to the credit side of your profit and loss account. So if you've got a debit balance, it means that you actually made a, a profit. Um, if you take your sales minus your cost of sales, you made a profit and that total will be moved to the profit and loss account if however there was a big bulls up and you've got a credit balance in your trading account that means you actually made a loss and you charged people less than what you paid for it then that total will move to the debit side of the profit and loss account okay but that we're all going to do now in the exercise now the income statement that um, that shows you the financial performance once again you use the nominal account section but you need to know once again you're going to use your sales your cost of sales any other income so please remember your nominal account is equity or your equity accounts if it's a, a debit it's an expense if it's a credit it's an income so you have your sales your cost of sales and any other income that will be on the top part and then you have your operating expenses which are all the expenses listed here except your interest income and interest expense so those two will be added and subtracted last so in other words you have your sales your cost of sales plus any other income that will be added there all your expenses except your interest expense and your interest income and that will be added last and then you have your balance sheet now for your balance sheet you can obviously by the name balance sheet um, section you will know from your balance sheet use your balance sheet balance sheet section and your balance sheet is only a detailed detailed version of the accounting equation meaning as your assets must equal your equity plus your liability all right so that's just in a nutshell what we will be doing right here right now but and like I say you can really calm down it is not that difficult it's actually very easy you just need to take the information on your trial balance 
and place it in these columns over here. So trading account, profit and loss, income statement, nominal account, your balance sheet account, use your balance sheet section. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to move the camera a little bit closer that you guys can see what I'm doing. So first of all, we'll be doing the trading account. After the trading account, we'll do the profit and loss account. After the profit and loss account, we do the income statement, and then we'll do the balance sheet. All right. I hope everybody's excited. So let's get going. Let me just move the camera a little bit forward so that you can actually see what I am doing. Okay. Okay, yeah. and there is our trial balance. You see, this, should, this is the same one you should have in the book. Like I said, it's on page, I think, 240. Okay. So, first of all, like I said, we're going to do the trading account. Now, the trading account, you only use your sales and your cost of sales. All right, so let me move that over there. So I'm just going to take those two totals and add them in here. Uh, okay, I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so first of all, your sales. You'll see your sales has got a, um, a credit balance, so that will also just be added in the credit section. So we've got February... 28, 20 whatever, and you have your sales, at your, okay, that'll be in your general, journal 12, and then you put the amount of 794,000. Okay, as simple as that. So now you look, if you look at your trial balance and you look at the cost of sales, it's got a debit balance, obviously. So let's put that one in there as well. So it's February 28, cost of sales, sorry, I'm not going to write it out. And then you put in the amount, which is 232,600. Okay, so that was easy enough. So all you have to do now is to balance it. So we can obviously see from this that your sales, uh, at your sales is the biggest amount. So that will be your benchmark for calculating or for balancing your trading account. Okay, so let's bring that down. It's seven nine four thousand. So this total must also be seven nine four thousand. Okay. So then your balance, now here you don't call it a balance, you call it a profit and loss. Because why? Because the other leg of the trading account is your profit and loss account. So you call it your profit and loss. So now you just balance it. So you take 794,000 minus 232,600 and then that total is 561,400. 561,400. Okay, and like I said before, if you have a debit balance, it means you actually made uh, a profit. So now that profit and loss account must be drawn, uh, well, that trading account balance, um, balance amount must be transferred to your profit and loss account. So let's just write the date here. It's February 28. It's a trading account. Remember, that's the other leg. Okay, so trading account, and then we just transfer that amount of five, six, one, four hundred. So please remember, if by for any reason there was a credit balance, it will be moved to your debit side of the profit and loss account. Okay, easy enough, easy enough. Okay, sorry, I'm going to move this. So the next part of doing your profit and loss account is you need to take all your credit on your nominal side 
which you can see is credit balances and you just have to add that to the credit side to the credit side of your profit and loss account so we have your settlement discount received which is 3800 so that has to go in there and then we've got interest on fixed deposit which is 700 rand so that must also so all so all your credits are income and you need to put that on the credit side of the profit and loss account all right so let me quickly add that one in so we've got settlement sorry i want to turn my little screen so that'll be settlement discount granted and as you can see from your trial balance oh, it's received sorry excuse my handwriting that'll be 3800 rand and then the other one the other credit is interest on fixed deposit and that was 700 so that will just get added there as well okay so now I've added all the credits so the step after that is well you can imagine sorry so let's see what did we do now we've taken we've used the sales cost of sales we've done all the income so now all we have to do is all the debits which is all your expenses must now be added to the debit side of the profit and loss account okay so as simple as that you just take all those amounts that you haven't that you haven't inserted in any of those columns um, any of the of the of the accounts yet and just put it on the debit side okay so that's all we're going to do now is take those amounts and just put it on the debit side you see, it's very, like I said before, it is extremely easy. You just need to take the information and put it in your books. So here we go on the debit side. So we've got February 28. So we've done sales, we've done cost of sales, we've done... So now we start with rates and taxes. So all those amounts you just put in. 14700. Um, so it's rates and taxes. Um, interest on mortgage loan. I know I'm writing very ugly, but yeah, just to save some time. Interest, salaries and wages. Fifty-two thousand telephone three thousand three hundred stationary eleven thousand nine hundred packing material. Twenty two thousand nine hundred general expense one thousand eight hundred and settlement discount granted uh, eight hundred. Okay. Just want to check that I do everything right. Yes, rates and taxes, interest, salaries, telephone, stationery. So all those expenses have now been transferred to the profit and loss account. So now, once again, now you just have to go and balance it. Okay, so, well, I've obviously already calculated all of this stuff. So I know that the credit side is the biggest amount. So that will be my benchmark. For it. So if you add those three up, you get five six five nine hundred. So that'll be my benchmark then five six five 
9,900. So 5, 6, 5, 900, then you minus all of that, and this will be called capital because if you have a debit balance, it means you made a profit. That's your net profit. So, you, so what you're actually calculating on your trading account is you're calculating your gross, gross profit, which is that's your profit before deductions, and then your net profit is the profit that you've made after, your, after deductions. So after calculating all of it, you have a net profit of four, 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 six hundred. Okay, so this was this was simple enough. I don't think there's any there's anything funny about it. So sorry, just want to move that back a bit. Ah, there we go. So just to recap what we've done here. We first done the trading account, which is your sales minus your cost of sales. So you calculate your gross profit, which is your profit before deductions. Then you transfer that amount to your um, profit and loss account, and you just added your incomes and all your expenses according to the nom the, your nominal account. Gave you your, your total. You have a debit balance, meaning you made a profit of four 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 six hundred. All right. So that was basic enough. Now we need to do the we're going to use the same information and we are going to transfer that to your income to your income statement and like I say once again you use the nominal accounts and you just have to know well basically what to go where and they obviously call it a bunch of funny names and they like to specify which section calculated um, well calculated what so they just uh, name that. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna start that. So, like I said before, your income statement. Once again, your sales minus your cost of sales. You add your other operating your other um, operating income. That would be your settlement discount that you've received. So you've received a discount that's considered the operating income, and you add that. Then less your operating expenses. Then you add all of your expenses except your interest income. Yeah, you'll see that at the operating expenses you don't add your interest income, and at the expenses you don't add your interest expense. You add those two later. So remember when you do your income statement, keep your interests of one side until it's necessary to put them into your state income statement. All right, so let's just do do this. So, th okay. So let's see. So now we're going back all again, right to there, and we're going to fill in that, complete that information, just like I've just explained. All right. So let's just put that there. Then you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so have your book in front of you that you can follow because I'm not going to move the camera left right the whole time so you know where to look. Just know that I'm taking the information from the trial balance and I will be transferring that to your or to the income statement. So first of all, like I said, you start here with your sales. So you just take that same information now, your sales Seven nine four thousand. Yeah. Then less your cost of sales. So your cost of sales is oh, where's my two three two six hundred, which is two three two six hundred. Okay, so remember what I said previously, you calculate your gross profit. And that is exactly what they're going to call it. So you just put the line and you write gross profit because that's what you're calculating. So you take 7, 9, oh sorry, yeah, remember you less the, um, less the cost of sales. And that'll be 561400. So by now, if you notice that your trading account and that balance isn't the same, then you know you made a mistake somewhere. 
All right. So that's 561, 400. Then you add your operating um, income. Now please note how they are writing is that they write those things on the, in the left column. Now that'll be your settlement discount. That'll be your settlement discount received. Of course that's the income, eh? Discount received. And that amount was uh, settlement discount received, 3,800. Okay, so please note, why do you write it on the left-hand side? If there was other operating income, let's say you received rent income or anything like that, you will write your rent income and you will put them all under the left-hand side. And only after you added them up, would you add it to the, um, to the right column. So right now it's only 3,800 settlement discount received. So, but if there was more, you would add it up and write the total up there. So let's just go. So it's 3,800. So that'll be, yeah, 3,800. So now we draw the line there. So what did we calculate now? Just remember, you need to know these, these things. So that'll be your gross operating income. So that's 561400 plus 3800 and that gives you 565200. Okay, so that's your gross operating income. Then less your operating expenses. Now remember what I said there, those are all the expenses listed there except your interest, your interest expense. Okay, so I'm just going to stand this side, then I can write it, and I can write it. So now I'm taking all these expenses except your interest expense, and remember your interest income wasn't added to your operating, your operating income. So let's just fill that in quickly. So that'll be your rates and taxes. That's one four seven hundred. See, once again, you're writing it on the left-hand side, on the left column. Only the, then, only you add everything up, and you're going to write the total on the right-hand side. Salaries and wages. Five to waka waka waka. Telephone. It's three thousand three hundred. Stationary. <coughs> Eleven thousand nine hundred. Packing material, twenty-two thousand nine hundred. General expenses, twenty-four thousand nine hundred. Settlement, um, settlement discount granted. And that's 800. Okay. So now let's draw a line there. Okay, remember what I said? So now we're going to add up all of those totals and only the total 
will be written on the right hand side so please remember to do that since we are um, um, subtracting the operating expenses the operating expenses from the gross operating income. So the total, if you add all of that up, is 107,400. Okay, so what did we calculate there? So that, so we got the gross operating um, income. So your operating profit is your gross operating income minus your operating expenses. So your operating profit is 565200 minus 107400. Yeah, 565200 minus 107400. That gives you 457800. Great. And now only do you add your interest income. And that is the interest on your fixed deposit, which is 700. Okay. And that is, that is your profit before interest expense. So that'll be four five seven eight hundred plus seven hundred. That gives you four five eight five hundred. Wait, four five eight five hundred. And then only less your interest expense. So the interest stuff lost. Added lost net no? interest expense. which is, where is that total now? Interest on mortgage loan is 1,300. Ach, no, 1,300, sorry. Okay, so your, and that gives you a total of, that is called your net profit. Uh, net profit for the year. Uh, So that's four five four five eight five hundred minus one three nine hundred, and that gives you four 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 six hundred. And if you look very carefully, you'll see that is the same total that's on your profit and loss account. So in other words, if you do that, then you can notice that or see that okay, I actually did everything right. All right, so I hope you guys are happy so far. So let's just, let's do a quick recap then. So first of all, you do your trading account. So your trading account is only your sales and your cost of sales. Then you do your profit and loss accounts. You transfer the total or the balance from the trading account to your profit and loss account and just add your income and your expenses and you calculate your net profit. Then in your income statement, once again, you do actually the same procedure. You just do it in a completely different format. Sales minus your cost of sales, which is your gross profit. Um, calculate your gross profit. Then you add your operating income, which is your settlement discount received. And any other operating income there might be. Write it on the left-hand side and only the total on the right-hand side. So that is your, that's called your gross operating income. Less your operating expenses, which is all your expenses except your interest expense. And then you add your interest income and your interest expense. Okay, so, so as you can see, not that difficult. So now we're going to be looking at your balance, at the balance sheet, which is also the last leg of this lesson. So now you use your balance sheet section and you will um, and you will obviously just transfer this information onto the onto your um, balance sheet and once again they just call things by different names 
and the balance sheet is uh, there's a lot of how can I say there's a lot of um, um, summaries like I say when you do financial statements you're going to see um, part of the balance sheet is you have notes and in and on your notes there's a detail um, detailed calculation details of how you got to your calculations so obviously for this exercise you don't need to do notes but they they just need to put everything more or less um, together that it's very easy to read and that it's not an extremely long process. So they're calling things on different names, but it's exactly the same information. All right, so please follow me and as I go, I will explain where I get the information from and why they call it what they call it. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the balance sheet. Now remember what I said. Oh, sorry. Let me just do this. Remember what I said, the balance sheet is nothing but a detailed version of your accounting equation, which is assets equal equity, assets equal equity plus your liability. And that is exactly that. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your assets all together, you're going to and put your equity and liabilities together, and those two total needs to balance. All right, so first of all, we're going to write because you're first doing your assets. Okay, so we're going to start with your non-current assets. Non-current current assets. So the first thing they've got here is called property. plant and equipment. So all they did there is they took your land and buildings, your vehicles and your equipment and they added that together. So they so your property, plant and equipment. That's what they that's what they call it. And you're gonna see when you do financial statements it's gonna there's actually gonna be a lot more detail to that, but for now very easy. So property, plant and equipment, that's your land and buildings, so it, plus your vehicles, plus your equipment, which is 850,000 plus 420,000 plus 130,000, and that total gives you 1.4 million. So let's just write that down. It's one, four, zero, zero, and three more zeros there. So that's just property, plant and equipment, and then you can mark it that you've used it land and buildings, vehicles and equipment. Then another non-current asset will be your financial assets. So this is why it's important to know what's a current asset and what's a non-current asset. So your financial assets will be your fixed deposit. Okay, and your fixed deposit can just mark it there, is 75,000. Okay, so in other words, oops, sorry, just trying to get my ruler. All right, so now we can add those two up, so your non-current assets, add those two up, and that gives you 147. 1475,000. Okay, so that's your total. So then next, we do your, so that's your, your non-current assets. So let's quickly do your current assets. Now your current assets, well, you can obviously, you know, when you, when you do this exercise, just go and mark everything, just mark everything on your balance sheet section and mark it non-current assets and current assets. That will just make it a lot easier when you do this exercise. So, and then you just need to know what they call it and what they put together, which groups they put together, like property, plant and equipment, fixed deposit, etc, etc. Okay, so let's see. So first of all, your current assets, um, trading inventory. Trading inventory is a current asset. They just call it inventories. 
and that amount is 23,000. Okay, let's see what else is a current asset. Current asset is uh, your debtors control. Debtors control, they, and remember debtors control fall under trade and other receivables. So the only one year will be your debtors control. Like I said, when you do financial statements, you're going to do the, you're going to do all the calculations with regard to it, and that will be explained in a lot more detail. But for now, it's not necessary to go into too much detail. And then, okay, so I've got debtors control, and what else is a current asset? Your bank. Okay, bank is a current asset but that will be cash and cash equivalents. Now under cash and cash equivalents, you will have your bank, your cash float, your petty cash, all of those things will fall under that um, category. So cash and cash equivalents. So luckily for you, yeah, they've only got bank and the bank is 10,300. Oh, I forgot to draw that line over there. Sorry, let me just do that. Okay, how much was bank again? 10,300. Yeah. Okay, so that's 10,300. Let's just draw this little line there. And yeah, because we're adding up our, our assets. Um, so now we add up 23,000 plus 45,200 plus 10,300, that is 78,500. So your current assets, 78,500. So then your total assets, is 1475,000 plus 78,500, gives you 1553,500. Great stuff. Okay, so now we've done uh, the assets. I just want to make sure I've marked everything with regards to it. Now we're going to look at your equity as well as your liabilities. Okay, because remember the balance sheet, like I said, it's a detailed, uh, well, detailed version of your accounting equation, which is ac assets equals equity plus liability. So now we've done the assets, so let's do the equity and liabilities. So let's just write that over there. So we're working now equity and liabilities. All right. So first thing we're doing is owner's equity. Okay, so we've got... Um, owner's equity, so we've got capital. And that is 797,900. Let me put that there, 797,900. Um, 797. Then, plus, please remember, we did calculate the, um, the profit for the year and profit also falls under the owner's equity so the total so the the net profit that you've calculated must be added to that so do not forget because remember it's it's money for the owner it's profit that the owner has made so that fall under the owner's equity so you have to add that total as well so you plus your net profit and your net profit, as we calculated, was four, 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 six hundred, and you get that from your income statement or from your profit and loss account. And then, obviously, we are not done because drawings has to be placed in it. Remember, capital and drawings go hand in hand. So you less your drawings. Your drawings was ten thousand. Right, let's check and we got everything. So in other words, your 
owner's equity will be 797,900 plus 444,600 minus 10,000. And then that gives you a total of 123,500. 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 100. Great. So we've done the owner's equity. So the equity is basically your capital, your net profit, minus your drawings, gives you owner's equity. So now we have to go to, of course, remember, assets equal equity plus liabilities. So now we have to split it. Let's go to your non-current liabilities. So let's look at the list. And see what is non-current liabilities. That will be your mortgage loan. Your yeah, mortgage loan is not a, a non-current liability. So mortgage loan of Tata Bank. Yeah, you wave your money, Tata. Ne? Tata Bank, and that is two five one. Two five one one hundred. Is it? Yeah. Two five one one hundred. Okay, and that seems to be the only uh, current liability. So yeah, and as I as I go, I mark it to know that I've used it, so I don't get confused. So I mark that on my trial balance. Okay. So two five one one hundred. Let's just. Draw a little line and then the total two five one one hundred. So I'm great. So now we've done the non current liabilities. So let's do the um, current liabilities. Okay, so let's see what's left. Um, I've, I'm sorry, it's one of my capital I've used, drawings I've used. Okay, so current liabilities, your creditors control is a current liabilities. And that is that, and then that's called trade and other payables. So that is then your creditors control. Uh, uh, 67500. There we go. 67500. And then last but not least, SARS. Of course, we have a VAT out input as well as a VAT output. So remember, VAT input, mm -hmm. when, money, when money goes out, it's VAT input. When money goes, comes in it's that output that input you can claim back from source that output is what you have to pay so now you have to see your that output is more than your that input so in other words you need to pay money back to source so that's why that is a current liability if your that input was higher than your that output that would be money you would be receiving and so that will then fall under your um, your current um, current assets. So you take your so you have to pay five thousand six hundred minus three thousand two hundred, which is two thousand four hundred rand, back to source. So that is your liability. So let's just do that. Oops, and that so six seven five hundred plus two four waka waka. That is six nine. What is it? Six nine nine hundred. Sorry, can't read my own handwriting. Six nine nine hundred. All right. So now we have to do is just calculate it. Your equity plus your non-current liabilities plus your current liabilities. That gives you a total of one one five five three five double. Oh. Right, one five five three five double O, and as you can see, this balance. So this is the same as your accounting equation, meaning assets equal equity plus liability. Okay. Mm, sorry, let me just move that up there and there. Okay. 
So guys, I hope this, um, this helps at least understanding how to complete your trading account, your profit and loss account, income statement, and your balance sheet. Let me just quickly recap through it. Trading account, profit and loss, and income statement, that use your nominal accounts for your balance sheet. You use your balance sheet sheet section to do your trading account it's your sales minus your cost of sales to get to your um, gross profit that total gets added to your profit and loss account if you have a debit debit balance on your trading account it goes to your credit side of your profit and loss if you have a credit balance it will move to your debit side of the profit and loss account then your profit and loss account you only add your incomes all your incomes on the credit side and all your expenses on the debit side and then you calculate your net profit. Then that information, you have your income statement, it's exactly the same, the, the same as what you did there except you have your sales minus your cost of sales which calculates your gross profit. Then you add other operating income which is your settlement, discount received, rent income, any type of income that you get through the operating of the business which would be your gross operating income then you list your operating expenses, which are all your expenses except your interest expense. And remember, your interest income must also be kept the last, or well, semi-last. So that your operating profit, add your interest income, so it's your profit before your interest expense you've calculated there, less your interest expense, which gives you your net profit for the year. And then... The balance sheet account, like I said before, it's just a detailed version of your accounting equation as it equals equity liabilities. We have to split everything according to your assets, um, your current assets, non-current assets, your um, equity, non-current liabilities and liabilities. And just remember the names, they put, they, they put um, everything into, into groups just to make it that they don't have a long list that they have to go through. So when they see property, plant and equipment, they exactly know what it is. So your property, your property, plant and equipment, that was your land and buildings, your vehicles, your equipment, all put in there, your financial assets added there, your current assets, your inventories, trade and other receivables, which is your like your debtors control, cash and cash equivalents, which is bank, cash flow, petty cash. So your total assets, and then you calculate your equity, which is your capital plus your net profit, which you've calculated in your income statement, minus your drawings. If you are your owner's equity, then you have your non-current liabilities and then your current liabilities. And I've explained all about SARS. So I hope this helps. This helps and I, and I hope I'm actually finished with the bookkeeping to trial balance now. But if there's any section in the textbook that I did not handle, please send me an email. And please send me the, um, exam an, an example in the textbook. Then I can work through it and I'll make a movie about that. Otherwise, I'll just, I'm going to try and carry on with um, business literacy next thing. All right. Thank you guys and study hard.